Way back in 1995 to 1998, I was conducting workshops and lectures on many of the topics I've made videos about on this channel and what I've spoken about in my first two books. However, there was a sudden change. Everything went on hold because I received a very special visit. Now at this point, I get a lot of haters leaving obscene and hate-filled comments below. These really don't bother me because sadly I know they are just scared out of their wits. They fear what they do not understand so they lash out in a hope that it will crush the truth and they can feel justified living in denial. So for those people who do not believe in aliens, interdimensional beings, angels, ghosts, UFOs, prophecy or metaphysical science in general, I would say leave now, go, go and watch a sports program or maybe Dancing with the Stars. I'll give you a few moments to run away. Bye. Late one night in 1998, I was finishing up on a university assignment I'd been working on. Sitting in front of the computer, a strange but familiar feeling came over me. The air around the room became electric, like static electricity. I could smell a metallic scent in the air, and then suddenly the room was filled with a wispy electric blue light. My spirit guide was manifesting into the physical realm. As his face emerged, I was overwhelmed by the sense of love and well-being. This was not the first time I had sat face to face with my main guide, Michael. And certainly it would not be the last. In fact, this incident was the beginning of a whole new chapter in my life. However, this time things seemed a little different. It was though he was in a hurry, which is really strange behaviour for a spirit guide. As he smiled at me, he said, I am here to ask you for your permission to allow some messengers to speak with you. It is very important. I knew it must have been important for Michael to ask me to speak with them. This all went back several years earlier when, after a particular incident, I made up a new rule. No entity, no matter who they are, are allowed to contact me in any way, shape or form directly without first going through Michael. He was now my gatekeeper, so anyone from a non-physical realm had to go via him to get to me. So with a thousand thoughts racing through my head and my heart ready to jump out of my chest, I said yes. He continued. There will be two entities coming through shortly to deliver their message. It is not easy for them to come here, so their time will be short. Please keep your questions short and do what they ask. I will keep my presence with you, however, your focus must remain on them. Daniel, I say again, this is very important. Well, who are they? I pondered. Pleiadians. Michael replied before fading out of view. Keeping his presence with me meant he was still in the room but out of physical view. Just a little reassurance and a bit of moral support for me. I'd never had anything to do with Pleiadians up until now, but I thought I knew a little bit about them. Almost immediately, two small clouds appeared about seven feet up in the air. The clouds started to expand down and in a green-yellow light until I was gawked to laid eyes upon and the tallest. Their features and high cheekbones coupled with dark almond-shaped eyes made me think of the legends of the Tua de Danan from the Celtic world or even angels of the Bible. Hail. We come at this time and place to deliver a message of warning and hope. This message is being delivered to all those that should receive it in this time and place. You are one of many, but not all will listen or act. The choice is yours. We deliver this message in accordance with the universal law, and without impedance to free will. Do you agree to accept this message? The first thing that struck me was how serious and clinical these beings were. Definitely no warm welcomes or idle chit-chat, just straight to the point. By the way, these beings are not to be confused with the UFO contact Billy Meyer and his Pelagians. These Pleiadians before me were highly advanced 11th dimensional spiritual beings. 
not from any physical realm as we understand. I confirmed my acceptance to review their message and they continued. There is much information to deliver. Observe your viewing device. They motioned to my computer monitor, which was turned off. The monitor sparked into life without me even touching it, and pictures started to appear. But something more amazing was taking place. I could hear what was happening and smell what was in the pictures. It was like I was literally in the picture, floating above the ground as an observer. To cut a long story short, I saw, heard, smelt an aftermath of destruction devastation, rotting corpses, disease, and people wandering around like zombies. When my heart and stomach could take or bear no more, I was suddenly above a small village in a lush mountain area. There were people smiling, children laughing, row after row of crops, lakes of pristine water, wildlife intermingling with livestock. This was such a stark contrast to the previous vision. Now the scene changed again. I was flying over continents very high in the air. I saw that many of the countries as we know them today were no longer the same. Some countries were gone altogether. They included Japan, parts of England, New Zealand, along with a lot of the smaller Pacific Islands, the Caribbean, and even Hawaii. Other countries looked like they were ripped in two. North America and Australia. But the most obvious thing was that all of the countries were sitting in a different location. There was also a really big new land that had risen from the ocean floor just north of New Zealand. After finally being released from the vision, the first thing that went through my head was it must have been a nuclear war or something. But how does that explain the happy people at the end? As if they could read my thoughts, one of the Pleiadians said, Not even your bombs could rend your planet though. What you are seeing is what has happened many times in the life of this planet. What you witnessed was the after event of a pole shift. We come at this time and place to give you warning, and to give you hope. Before they faded out of view and left me, they said one last thing. When the great shift comes, as per the universe a law of free will, mankind must choose. If they choose love, they will ascend. However, if they choose fear, then there will be a threefold return. What did they mean by ascend? And what was the threefold return? These were the questions I immediately asked myself. In the next few years, I learnt what both were and began to tell the world. Moving now to the present in May 2016, the seeds that were planted on that night are beginning to take root. When 2012 came, there was an opportunity to ascend en masse and avoid the hardship route. However, as I said in November and December of 2012, it was very unlikely that the mass ascension would take place because the majority of humanity had bought into the mass media driven fear campaign. All the doom and gloom end of the world nonsense. In fact, it was supposed to be the exact opposite. A new doorway was to be opened, a shift, a new era in human development. However, the Illuminati knew exactly what 2012 was all about, so they stopped at nothing. I did say on record that if humanity chooses fear, then God help them because I knew what would come next. Basically, the earth is ascending with or without humanity. But because humans have saturated her with all manner of filth and negative vibration, she literally has to shake herself clean before she can go. So imagine a dog shaking itself off as it gets out of the water. Unfortunately, humans chose war corruption, greed, and selfishness. And that is what they got. But the corruption, the greed, the mass control systems are so endemic now, the only way to get rid of them is to wipe the slate clean. Even if people decided to arrest the greedy banksters, fire the corrupt politicians, and run the royal scumbags out of town, it's too late. 
If you remove one, there are 10 more to fill the vacuum and take their place. The average person is happy to just let someone else run things, even if they are doing evil and corruption. Indeed, there are too many people who would stand and fight to keep these institutions going. And there lies the whole problem. No one wants to take responsibility for their own actions, their own choices, and their own life. It is either always someone else's fault for their life being a mess, and never realizing it's all about choice. Are you in a crappy marriage? Then leave. Are you in a crappy job? Then leave. Are you lonely and desperate for company or love? Then go out of your way to meet someone. Look for what is inside a person rather than focusing on the outside. Nothing will ever just drop into your lap. You must initiate change and radical change requires a radical shift in your consciousness. Yes, you'll say, oh, it's not that simple. Well, it is. Everything is simple. Humans make it complicated. What is the advice you would give a friend or even a stranger if they came to you for advice? Apply that to yourself and I can guarantee you that your life will take a turn for the better within days. Speaking of choices, since the 2012 rejection of mass ascension, there have been three choices. The threefold return into the physical realm. As his face emerged, I was overwhelmed by the sense of love and well-being. This was not the first time I had sat face to face with my main guide, Michael, and certainly it would not be the last. In fact, this incident was the beginning of a whole new chapter in my life. However, this time things seemed a little different. It was though he was in a hurry, which is really strange. I'll give you a few moments to run away. Bye. Late one night in 1998, I was finishing up on a university assignment I'd been working on. Sitting in front of the computer, a strange but familiar feeling came over me. The air around the room became electric, like static electricity. I could smell a metallic scent in the air, and then suddenly the room was filled with a wispy electric blue light. My spirit guide was manifesting. They are just scared out of their wits. They fear what they do not understand, so they lash out in a hope that it will crush the truth and they can feel justified living in denial. So for those people who do not believe in aliens, interdimensional beings, angels, ghosts, UFOs, prophecy, or metaphysical science in general, I would say, leave now. Go, go and watch a sports program or maybe dancing with the stars. Behavior for a spirit guide. As he smiled at me, he said, I am here to ask you for your permission to allow some messengers to speak with you. It is very important. I knew it must have been important for Michael to ask me to speak with them. This all went back several years earlier when, after a particular incident, I made up a new rule. No entity, no matter who they are, are allowed to contact me in any way, shape or form. Way back in 1995 to 1998, I was conducting workshops and lectures on many of the topics I've made videos about on this channel and what I've spoken about in my first two books. However, there was a sudden change. Everything went on hold because I received a very special visit. Now at this point, I get a lot of haters leaving obscene and hate-filled comments below. These really don't bother me because sadly I know 